Hello friends and fellow Vedsies and welcome back to day 23 of Veds. It is time for another Forum Thursday, the last kind of normal one I have because next week's is going to be the wrap-up video. So let's not waste any time and let's talk about what we've been talking about in Veds. I want to give a couple quick shout outs, one to James's video on Schmigadoon because I have Apple TV Plus because I bought an iPhone so they gave it to me for a year, and the only thing I've really been watching on there has been Ted Lasso. So I've been thinking, should I give Schmigadoon a chance? And your video has kind of given me a little bit more insight into that. And I think I'm going to try it, but I think my expectations have been lowered a bit from where they were. Anyway, good video, good review enjoyed it. I do apologize for being kind of low energy today. I am very tired. I also want to draw attention to the museum videos that Graham and Alicia both put out when they were uh, on their little trip. That was a really cool museum from the Orca exhibit to the First Nations exhibit and then of course traveling kind of through time of the region. One of the things I really like about museums, more so than even what they actually show, is how they're laid out. And so it was really cool to kind of walk through with y'all and to then get two perspectives from both of y'all's videos. Oh, and I do also want to shout out Alicia's Time Monster video. Um, love the classic Doctor Who references, of course, but also I, I just feel like Alicia once again said things that I was thinking just in words that actually make sense. Um, and so I think that if y'all haven't seen that video yet, definitely go seek that one out. And finally, before we jump into the topics, a Big shout out to the cooking videos that Jeffrey and Abby put up. One, those were just a lot of fun to watch. And much like Alicia and Graham's uh, travel videos, it's fun to see two sides of kind of the same topic explored with uh, the two sides of your cooking collab. I'm of course really excited to try that recipe at some point. Um, but I think the thing that really stuck out to me most about that video is just how fun it is to cook with other people. I have a friend who I've already brought up uh, this month, Quinn, back in school. Every, uh, I believe it was Thursday, whatever day new episodes of Atlanta come out, I would go over to his apartment um, and he, me, and a uh, his roommate, Bailey, we would kind of rotate who would cook and then we would watch the newest episode of Atlanta and talk about it. And whenever I went over and Quinn was cooking, it was automatically, all right, you do this, Bailey, you do this, and it's all kind of this collaborative thing. And it was just really fun. And so seeing y'all two work together and Abby making the sauce and Jeffrey making the chicken, it just kind of brought back some of those memories. And it was good vibes all around. And going from one Abby video to the other, I want to talk a little bit about some thoughts that Abby's folklore as memes video kind of made me think about. I think, Abby, that you made a pretty compelling case about folklore being memes. Memes are definitely a form of communication that's more democratized, and I appreciate because, you know, despite, like, um, education level or income level or age even, it's a way that you can master as a form of communication and then apply to your community. I think it's, and you can pass along really interesting information because memes just don't have to be jokes. Oftentimes they are, but you can also pass along information through memes, which I appreciate um, kind of hearing contextualized through this idea of folklore. But like whenever I hear anything vaguely related to mythology as folklore kind of very tenuously is it made me think of this idea of like defining things like folklore folk tales mythology common knowledge and how we retroactively define that for other um, cultures and how in other times and how that can complicate how we define our own. And I think it's a valuable practice to not just focus on what was in the past, but to apply that stuff to the modern day. It's something that's very difficult to do through mythology. Obviously, there are living mythologies that are still going, whether those are through indigenous peoples or through religions. But most of the time, we, when we define mythology, we are defining it through a retrospective lens. And so flipping that lens can really distort things which is why I think I appreciated how you were very careful and how you were 
not doing that with your new definition of folklore and how you were adapting the definitions that were traditionally used to make your case. I don't know if any of that made sense, but we're gonna go for it. And finally, I just wanna briefly talk about Tessa's video about alternate universes, and because I'm me, relate those to comic books. Because they take up a very interesting space in like mainstream big two superhero comics that have had one continuity, more or less DC does keep rebooting their continuity, but it's really just cherry picking what they want people to remember from the previous you know, 60 years. Uh, Marvel though has had one continuous continuity um, since you know the 60s and DC's goes back even further. And so when you are telling stories within this like long line of continuity, there is this habit that everything must return eventually to the status quo. Me and my roommate kind of refer to it as a rubber band. You can stretch the rubber band and you can take characters in like wild directions, but eventually it's gonna snap back. So like right now, in X-Men continuity, the X-Men are going off and they have made their own like continent and they are doing like really interesting political stuff. And then eventually though, it's gonna snap back and my heart's gonna be broken and they're just gonna be a boring school in Westchester. And if you couldn't tell from my tone, I think that comics are more interesting the further you stretch that rubber band. And one of the ways you can just permanently stretch that rubber band is by telling alternate universe stories. Now you can of course have crossover stories, those happen all the time, both within companies and then like without you know, external crossovers. And usually through alternate timelines, you can have the new setting who dis kind of things. Bringing it all back around to Excalibur, there is a long storyline where all they are doing is going through alternate universes and you get to see how the different settings affect familiar uh, Marvel characters. But I think the best kind of stories are what Tessa was calling the what ifs, which of course were a line of Marvel comic books that were all about exploring different scenarios. But you occasionally get kind of modern interpretations of that. And one of those is this great comic called Spider-Man Life Story which its whole premise is we're gonna start where Spider-Man started in the 60s where he is a um, young college student and he's doing the things he would normally be doing. He's uh, dating Gwen Stacy, he is fighting the Green Goblin, but the next issue is gonna be set in the 70s and he's gonna be 10 years older. And then in the 80s and he's gonna be 10 years older. And so he starts to grow up. He's doing the thing that he can't do in normal continuity. And so by the end, you get to a story where he is an old man and all of these different things have changed because the writer, Chip Zdarsky, was actually able to flesh out this world and be like, what would it have been like if superheroes had fought in Vietnam? And like, what would it have been like if the stories that are well known for Spider-Man had happened not when he was like perpetually in his 20s, but like when he was 40 or 50. And so at least in the space of comic books, AUs aren't just opportunities for really cool stories, they're almost necessities for giving fans new and fresh look at super familiar characters. Anyway, those are just some of the thoughts I've had while watching y'all's great videos this week. I'm excited for the last week of VEDs. Um, I know that on October 1st, I will be sad that it will be over, but we've got a whole seven days left. So let's enjoy them. Friends and fellow Vedsies, I will see you tomorrow.